Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So let's go ahead and install Rustup Okay So first of all, uh, my tutorial is kind of different from other tutorials In the way that uh, I'll, I'll try as much as possible to not make it so outdated and How? Well, instead of showing you how to install Rustup I'm going to show you how you can actually find the information on how to install Rustup Then I'm going to show you how to install Rustup So yeah, anyways, you're going to go to your favorite search engine and type in Rustup book Okay, and then you're going to find this website right here, which is lovely, okay? This is always going to be up to date, so I really, really recommend you to go through this guide and read it carefully, okay? It's just packed with a lot of beautiful information, and I, I really, let me tell you, it's really valuable, okay? All right, so just read through it, and in, my, in our case, right, uh, this is Windows 11, so we're just going to go installation windows, right? Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of stuff, and you're gonna notice that. Uh, mention a rest download page. All right, so so just make sure to read through this, and you can also notice that it's telling us that it needs um, installation of Visual Studio build tools but I'm gonna show you the error first so if somehow you forgot to install that then you're gonna see the error and you'll instantly know what I'm talking about so okay fine let's go to a new tab I'm just gonna search for uh, rust up and then go to the first link or actually uh, I, I prefer this one more rust link install rust okay and there you go you have these two buttons right here, the Lloyd Rustup in it, .exe 64-bit. So, and Windows Subsystem for Linux, pretty cool stuff. Um, so, uh, we need this guy right here, the Lloyd Rustup in dash in it, .exe 64-bit. Since I'm on a 64-bit system, I mean, if we have a look into, uh, oops, sorry, uh, oh man, what I've done, cancel. Eight. <laughs> okay, uh, if we go to this PC and look for properties, you're going to find if your machine is 64-bit or 32-bit. Most, if not all, modern machines are 64-bit, so you can probably assume that. But yeah, anyways, let's go to Rust up Init, open file. Lovely. Now uh, read through what, whatever it's saying. Rust Visual C++ prerequisites. Rust requires a linker and Windows API libraries. They don't seem to be available. These components can be acquired through a Visual Studio installer. Okay, so one, there is three options right here. Quick install via the Visual Studio Community Installer. Quick install via the Visual Studio Community Installer, free for individuals, academic users, and open source. Manually install the prerequisites for enterprise and advanced users, and don't install the prerequisites. So if you want the IDE, the Visual Studio Community IDE, then go ahead and press one and go and like just go with it, okay? But in my case, I don't want to download the whole Visual Studio IDE uh, because it's gonna take forever, and most people don't need that. Okay, so I'm going to look for Visual Studio Build Tools. Okay, these are basically... Uh, so if you install the IDE, you're going to get a C++ IDE, but also the Microsoft Build Tools with it. But in my case, I'm just going to go ahead, right ahead, and just get the command line build tools. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and do this. Okay. So if you want the IDE, click on free download. If you want a professional, enterprise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh -huh. All right. So let's look for the build tools. Uh -huh. There you go. As you can see, build tools for visual. By the way, I actually done this using Control F. If you say Control F, you can type in build tools, and you're gonna it's gonna highlight all the stuff that tells you build tools and as you can see there is this one here so these build tools allow you to build Visual Studio projects from a command line interface supported projects include ASP.NET, Azure, C++ Desktop, ClickOnce Containers, .NET Core, .NET Desktop, Node.js, Office and SharePoint, Python, TypeScript, blah blah <laughs> anyways uh, 
I don't know what's that. Uh, use of this tool re requires a valid Visual Studio license unless you're building open source dependencies for your pro project. See the build tools license. Mm -hmm. All right, so I just always recommend you to read through the information. But anyways, build tools for Visual Studio, click on download. And it's gonna download the Visual Studio build tools installer. Click on it, yes. As you can see, Visual Studio Installer, continue. All right, wait a bit. I'm gonna pause the recording until it's done. All right, it's done. Well, almost. So as you can see, download installed, get the Visual Studio installed already. It was pretty, pretty quick, so. Uh, this is not installing the actual build. All right, so my OBS have crashed somehow for some reason. So anyways, here is, I, I just clicked on modify, but you're gonna have a similar window, right? For installing and make sure to check this desktop development with C++ and then click on install that you're gonna find here. Okay, um, so yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it. Pretty, pretty much it. If you want to get, you could probably maybe find it here if I remember well. No, uh, we're gonna see it later on. Anyways, close. And by the way, if you want to modify your installation, like for example, some Rust crates may require you to download some more stuff, then just go back to your Visual Studio installer, you know, click on modify. And there you go, you'll get the same window and then you can do whatever you want. Then again, click on install or whatever. All right, so that's it for Visual Studio Installer. Um, next up is, um, let's see. Let's go back to our download, pretty much. If we go back to downloads. Uh, okay, so we were in Rust up in it. Oops, 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 what I've done here. Okay, install any timers. All right. All right, just click on Rust Up EXE and then click on, like, just press on Enter and it's going to start uh, the loading uh, cargo and Rust stuff essentially. And of course you can uninstall RustUp with just uh, executing this command, RustUp self uninstall. All right, so yeah, cargo Rust, this can be modified. Cargo home directory. And this is the cargo home directory, uh, the user's profile slash point cargo. And as you can see, Rust C, Rust STD, Rust Docs, um, and I'm using the tool chain MSVC that's why I had to actually install Visual Studio build tools otherwise if you use the the GNU like the GCC kind of thing then you're gonna need MSY 2S or something like that but yeah so Rust is installed now great so as you can see Rust should be installed by now so if we click on terminal Okay, and then we say cargo dash dash version. And there you go, I got my my cargo version. That means that Rust have installed successfully. Now, I'm gonna create a folder for myself. I'm gonna call it projects. Okay, I'm gonna go inside projects. Now I'm gonna say cargo new to create a new project. Now, if you want to create a library, you can gotta say dash dash lib, or if you want to create a binary, then you can say dash dash bin, or by default, it creates a binary, so you don't need to say dash dash bin, anyways. So you just say cargo new, then you, you name your project something. In Rust, we, 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 we follow a lot of conventions in terms, even in terms of naming, so make sure to use this types of naming, hello world, like this, you know. Um, don't use, uh, you know, like, what is it called? 
uh, uppercase letters, right? And use uh, this guy instead of uh, spaces, all right? And just cargo new, hello world, and there you go. Now we can go inside of that hello world uh, project. Okay, and there you go. You can say explorer.exe dot so as to launch the explorer inside of the project folder. As you can see, it contains a cargo.toml, an src, and a main.rs. Okay, so this is the default configuration. And also, there is git ignore there. And in fact, if you click open up with a notepad, you can see the content. It's just it just text files with the extension toml. This is your where you actually put your dependencies and you name your package, you change the version, the edition, etc. Right? And there is the SRC and here is the actual source code. The main file. Let's see. Uh, how can I open open with? You can say notepad just once. And there you go, this is your main function. Okay, so as you can see, you can actually go ahead and work with this. So if I say cargo R uh, or cargo run like this, it's just gonna build and run. If you want to just build, then say cargo B or cargo build. So I'm just gonna say cargo R, and it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna compile and and run. Then it will give me hello world because the main, like the default project is actually a hello world program as you can see here here we created the main function and then we have the macro print line and then uh, a hello world string and the semicolon there now you can in fact uh, just program using notepad if you want to control s to save or file save now if we run again we should get hello YouTube. There you go, nice. But as you can notice already, is that this is a pretty <laughs> ugly <laughs> editor to use for a pro for such a sophisticated programming language as such as Rust. So to make the process much nicer, we're gonna look for VS Code uh, to download VS Code. Now you could actually go ahead and look for VS Code here and just download for Windows. Otherwise, you could go to the store and download it from there. You go to the Microsoft Store and look for Visual Studio Code. And there you go. You can install it from here. Wait for it to download and you should be good to go. And of course, we do need some extensions and that I'm going to show you and I'm also going to give you some tips on how to go about it. Otherwise, since while it's still loaded, let's go to the FAQ, the most common questions. So, can I sub download the Rust source code? So, if Rust fails with Windows Error 32, it may be due to antivirus scanning in the background. So make sure to disable antivirus scanner if you if you get this Windows error, error 32. Otherwise, if you get this error, check up this stuff. But yeah, you got the point. So, and I really recommend you to go through all of this stuff. Anyways, so right now Visual Studio Code seems like it's installed, which is amazing. So now I could here back in my terminal while I'm, I'm in the projects folder I can say code point point infers like refers to the current directory and it just will go ahead and hopefully but yeah I have to restart my terminal uh, because I just installed uh, Visual Studio Code so let's go CD project slash uh, hello world let's go clear and then it's gonna say code point okay Let's wait a bit and there you go. You have launched my Visual Studio Code and you can trust the authors and stuff like that anyways. So Git not found, install it or configure it using. I really recommend downloading Git. So let's go ahead and do that too. Windows, uh, this is of course used for GitHub. Click here to download and there you go. It's gonna download 64 bit, nice. 
and while that that is going you can browse the color themes you can check out whatever theme you'd like uh, but yeah anyways so now we need some extension I mean if you go ahead and open main.rs you should probably get a suggestion from VS Code about extensions but it doesn't seem like it so far either way let's actually see okay git is actually installed so let's go ahead and and open it up yes next next uh, right at git bash profile next next use notepad plus plus as Git's default editor. I guess I'd recommend saying use Visual Studio Code as Git's default editor, maybe. Let Git decide. Uh -huh. Next, use bundled open SSH, use the open SSL. Blah 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 blah. Anyways, I uh, I don't know to be honest. Let's just go next. Default. You could choose whatever stuff you need. Doesn't matter. Okay. And there you go, lynch git bash, finish. There you go, you get your GitHub. If I say git, there you go. Git dash v or dash dash version dash v. There you go, git version 2.39. Let's go. So I have installed git too, which is interesting. Now, if you hold control and scroll your mouse wheel, it won't actually zoom in and out, which is so annoying, but you can actually change that if you go to preferences settings or you say control comma. You can search for, uh, let's see, uh, scroll or I think mouse wheel or uh, control whether it's scrolling. Uh, scroll a bit. No, I guess. Uh, hmm. Mouse wheel. Right. Look for wheel. Mouse wheel. There you go. Editor mouse wheel zoom. Uh, enable that, and now you can actually zoom in and out you by holding control and scrolling your mouse wheel. There you go. Now let's try to grab the rust up extensions because right now while we have syntax highlighting as you can notice but we don't have uh, auto completion. So let's go ahead and let's go and search for rust analyzer. And in fact it already have recommended that for me. I mean if you check out here it already recommended for me rust analyzer so let's install that. There you go. All right. What is this? Supercharged. I never really used this guy, but it does seem interesting. So I guess I'll just install it anyways. All right. Uh, otherwise, I also recommend some other extensions. Uh, for Rust, or in fact for anything really, uh, I recommend Error Lens. Error Lens. And by the way, right now since the Rust analyzer, we have installed Rust analyzer. Now, right now, it's going to give you code completion, as you can see here. If you have some kind of variable, uh, it's going to also tell you which type it, the Rust compiler have inferred. Okay. And by the way, there's also some something else, which is that. Rust bombards you uh, with warnings when there is some unused uh, variables or unused stuff. Uh, if you want, if that's so annoying to you and distracting, you can do this. Just add the 
this guy right here and this guy and say allow and used but of course make sure to to remove it or co comment it out uh, when you're done with your project okay As, so it can warn you again on if there's anything that you have missed okay uh, and make sure to add by the way this guy because otherwise it won't actually uh, apply to the whole project but if you add this it will apply to the whole project and by the way uh, there is some in used stuff that is useful uh, you, if you want to do that then you can say worn and used and then you can actually tell it what exactly you want to whitelist you know because allow in used in used is a lint group for all of this stuff but if you want to exclude one of these guys that you can say worn again and say in used and I really recommend keeping must use worn and used must use and so yeah you could also add in used imports you know and stuff like that all right so that's pretty much it use and save blah 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 anyways but yeah I really recommend at least in use must use to be there and here we go error lens install this error lens and this will essentially give you the errors uh, on the same line as where it occurred for example if I missed a semicolon here instead of me I mean hold on a second if I install this for a second okay let's actually main the RS uh, I guess I have to reload okay let's reload so when I have this error it doesn't actually it doesn't tell me what is the error until I actually go ahead you can open up a terminal like this terminal and then you can say new terminal or you could say control shift plus uh, plus back tick or you could just say control back tick okay then it's gonna give you a terminal by default it's uh, I believe it's maybe PowerShell I'm not exactly sure but yeah you could actually click on here and then you can select PowerShell or git bash or command prompt or JavaScript debug terminal etc etc and here you could say cargo R and as you can see when you say cargo R it actually tells you what is the error expected semicolon found that guy and if by the way you hold control then you can click on that thing and it will go ahead and links you to the to the file and uh, the place to where that happens where the error is happening um, but yeah otherwise there's also cargo clippy uh, which gives which is similar to the errors of this guy but it also gives you much more uh, information and help and suggestions essentially but yeah 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 now if I have something like this I say cargo R as you can see hello YouTube cargo clippy for clippy as you can see it gave me some kind of uh, uh, suggestion it says approximate value of f32 64 cons pi found let pi equal 3.14 and it, there is a help section consider using the constant directly for further information visit this guy all right, so it's telling me to use F32 or 64 count spy instead of 3.14. Uh, this is a really cool suggestion. So what we can do, we can say F32 or F64, uh, right? And then say consts, uh, just like it's saying here. And then you can say pi, essentially, I believe. So um, now if I run this, gonna happen oh yeah sorry a CD you have to say a CD f64 const pi and now if I say cargo clipping it no longer gives me any suggestion and cargo R and there you go hello YouTube nice if you want to for example let's say print that lot that variable you could say pi is of course this is not meant to be a rust tutorial a complete rust tutorial I'm just giving you a bit of a head start uh, just to show you what's possible with the IDE that's and uh, the rust tools cargo R and there you go pi is 3.14 this is this in rust means that I'm gonna give you some this is like a placeholder okay and print line it ends with this guy because it's a macro okay 
All right, interesting. So this is the main function, of course. You could also click on debug, but it's going to tell you if you want debug, you have to to install either MSC++ tools or code LLDB. I'd recommend code LLDB. Why? Because uh, Microsoft itself also recommends code LLDB for better integration with Rust uh, and with VS Code. Otherwise, if you want more detailed debugging information, make sure to go back into your Visual Studio Code uh, installer and install uh, actually not here uh, go ahead and install C++, C++ C++ uh, stuff there you go install this otherwise you could just install code LLDB so install that and you should have debugging stuff ready so if I click on debug now as you can see acquiring code LLDB platform package there you go uh, Right in the end. And by the way, I, I think I didn't actually explain this really well, but essentially I'm allowing all in used for now, but I'm warning the stuff that should be used, that there's no, like for example, if there is some result that you didn't use and you should use, like some kind of error or something, then the error will go unnoticed. That's why I'm actually whitelisting in use must use. So it does actually tell me about that. But there you go, as you can see, I clicked on debug and there you go, console is in commands mode, prefix expressions with. <coughs> okay, so as you can see, process exit with code zero. But if you add a breakpoint and then run in debug, and just kind of Tom has been detected, just click yes. And it's gonna create a lynch.json right here, as you can see, automatically for you. And now you can actually go ahead and debug I uh, can click on debug here and there you go it's gonna stop on the on the guy <laughs> on that uh, breakpoint that you have set it and you can then see and inspect uh, local variables as you can see pi is this static variables global variables and even the registers if you feel adventures <laughs> there you go uh, even the floating point registers <laughs> if you're that advanced but, but there you go. Uh, even the call stack, the watch, you can watch some variables here. For example, if I want to watch the, the variable pi, I can insert that and there you go. There's also the call stack. The call stack is essentially where you can see, like, for example, if you have multiple function calls, you can see <laughs> which function called which and how you reach this point in the program, right? For example, for example, let's see if I can give you an example here. Okay, so I think this has given me the threads. In this case, I believe maybe there is four threads or something like that. Uh, but the one that is paused on this breakpoint is this guy. Okay, and you can notice that static void hello world main. And it's coming from this guy, coming from this guy, coming from this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all crazy uh, what is it called assembly <laughs> so yeah um, so yeah and of course you could use this continue stuff to continue etc and for example if I say um, pi is equal to I don't know 3.0 then pi is equal to 2.0 pi 0, etc or let's say plus equal 1.0 now of course this will give me an error and by the way <laughs> I forgot about uh, error lens and you can notice that it only tells you this but it doesn't give you the error but if I say uh, error lens if I install this cool extension called error lens uh, install it don't install this one because this one is deprecated okay and as you can see right now, since I have error lens, it actually shows me the, the error in the same line. If you like that, make sure to install that extension. Okay, now as you can see, Rust tells me cannot assign twice to immutable variable, pi cannot assign twice to immutable variable. Well, it's exactly telling me what to do. Let's immutable pi. And this is a good uh, opportunity to show you where to go next after, uh, you know, 
installing Rustop, etc., and set up in your VS Code. Um, so look for the Rust book, okay? Go to your favorite search engine and look for Rust book. There you go, the Rust programming language. Uh, uh, you're gonna find all the links in the description, by the way, and go through all of this stuff. It's pretty amazing. Uh, but there you go, it even tells you the installation stuff. Hello world, hello cargo, exact. Uh, you know, there you go. Pretty cool stuff. You could look for mutability. There you go. Variables and mutability. Now, if you go to this place, uh, as you can see, if you remember, it was talking about immutable, blah, 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 blah. So, and by the way, if you actually go ahead, control point. Oh, actually, it doesn't give me any kind of crazy stuff. Uh, but in fact, if I go cargo clippy, um, let's see. As you can see, Rust gives you a lot of beautiful help. Uh, as you can see here, help consider making this binding mutable. And it tells you exactly what you need to do. Here it's saying to me to, to, to say mutable pi. Otherwise, I can go to the Rust book, look for variables and mutability, and there you go. This is a whole thing about mutability. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially it. So yeah, now I can put a breakpoint. Okay, and or maybe even I can put it in the function itself, I guess, and then click on debug. This will bring this debug window. Now, as you can see, there is no local, no statics, no globals, uh, and there is the registers right here. Uh, but yeah, so as you can see here, I'm watching pi, but error could not find item. And uh, let me just show you. You just click on the plus, then you tell it which variable you want to watch. For example, here pi, but here it tell me error could not find item because it's not declared yet. But if I continue, I can even step over. I can step into and step out. If I continue, oh sorry, no, not continue. Uh, I guess step over. There you go, step over. Or you could say F10. As you can see, it still could not find item because it's it's about to run that line of code. So I say F10, there we go. Now it's actually showing me the item of pi, the value of pi. If I say F10 again, right now, as you, as you can see, it's the watch have told me that it changed by highlighting it and it's telling me the value. F10 again, there you go. There you go. Now could not find item because well, when you, when you exit the scope of a variable, it's no longer valid. Uh, it just gets dropped. Okay, but anyways, that's essentially it. So that's just a little introduction to the tools that are available to you. And of course, uh, let's not forget about uh, Cargo FMT. So if you say Cargo FMT, it's gonna format the code, your code, depending on the standards of Rust. Okay, on the conventions of Rust, and this is pretty useful. Now, for example. Let's say I do something like this. You know, I have some some weird program. <laughs> Someone decided to uh, to program like this, you know, or something, whatever. Uh, and then I make sure to say Control S and Cargo FMT. There you go, and it just makes it better for me. It formats it better. Otherwise, you could do something pretty cool. I'm just gonna go back to the original one. Then I'm gonna look for Control Shift P, just uh, Control Shift P, and look for settings. Okay, or you could actually say Control Comma, or you can go to File and then click on Pre-references and Settings. There you go. <coughs> but essentially, look for FMT. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. No, uh, format on save, something like that. There you go. If you search for format on save and then you click on that, you enabled it. Now, whenever you save your file, it will go ahead and format for you automatically. You don't have to always say cargo FMT, cargo FMT after every time, okay? It will automatically do, do that for you every time you save the file <coughs> or actually the projects. But anyways, uh, so that's essentially it. 
and by the way there's a lot more information to cover really um, for example if you go to overrides uh, so actually if you go to concepts right there is a concept of channel, tool, chain, target, component, profile. Now Rust can even compile to Android or Apple or whatever. It can compile to whatever target you want. But you have to go to, let's see, you have to add the target. You're going to find somewhere here on how to do that. I don't remember where exactly. Uh, but yeah, you could just say terminal, right? We could say rust up, I believe, target add, or let's go first rust up target list, and it will tell you all the, the targets that you can actually add. As you can see, there's all this stuff. Uh, okay, and then you can just copy it over and then say rust up target add, and then you can paste it, paste that target name, and it will actually go ahead and add that target, and then you can actually compile for that and you know stuff like that but anyways I really recommend you to go through all of these books that I've shown you you're gonna find all the links in the description and so I believe that's it uh, for today's video and of course you have also you have also git and this is the the git lens extensions that we have done but yeah that was it for this video and see you later guys goodbye